o'clock. Hello, everyone. I have six o'clock on the dot, so I'd like to welcome everyone to tonight's USD 409 regular board meeting. I'd like to welcome all of you and thank you for being here. My first order of business is the order and approval of tonight's agenda as presented. Could I have a motion, please? So moved. Thank you, Stephanie. May I have a second? I'll second. Thank you, Sally. Uh, any discussion? Seeing none, all in favor, raise your right hand. Thank you so much. Passes unanimously. Tonight, uh, first up is our reports from the Atchison Middle School Building and Site Council report. So, Mr. Chad Bilderback, and come on up and... Uh, Hey, Tyler. All right. Hi, guys. How's everybody doing? Doing all right? I'm going to start off with, how about those Chiefs? <laughs> That's what Go Chiefs. So uh, we're here to talk a little bit about Ashton Middle School. Um, as you can see, we brought the whole family with us. So uh, I'm not going to do a whole lot of talking um, up here. I got I brought, so I brought them. So uh, we're going to go through uh, quite a few things this evening. So I want to make my part kind of limited here. So we're going to talk about some social emotional learning stuff that we're doing at the middle school. We're going to talk about our civic engagement that we're doing, uh, as well as we're going to look at some data and growth. And then lastly, we're going to be talking a little bit about uh, some exciting news uh, with our league assignment that we got uh, recently. So I'm going to now turn it over to, I believe, Ms. Copeman's going to come up, and she's going to talk a little bit about, uh, we, we recently implemented Boys Town skills this year, and so she's going to talk a little bit about that. So I'll turn it over to her. Hello. Hi. All right. So um, Boys Town is what all of us are teaching in our ICE class. And as you know, it's a curriculum that teaches life skills, and it's very transferable throughout the classroom, um, as well as life. Um, so all of the teachers have a specific curriculum that they are teaching, and it's very simple. So that is what's nice about it. Um, we have posters after we teach them. We hang a poster in our room, and we can refer back to that whenever um, the uh, occasion arises. Um, uh, but it is uh, also has a focus on student competencies, creating a positive classroom environment for them. So we do try to focus on the positive with that voice town. Um, here are the basic skills. So this is what each of us are teaching this year. So you can see follow directions, accepting no for an answer. And when I say they're simple, I mean you can see the steps. So perhaps if a student isn't following one of them. I mean, I don't even have to say anything. We can just kind of look like, go like this with the whole wall of posters, and they know. And so um, accepting no for an answer, uh, criticism or a consequence, showing respect, introducing yourself, talking with others, accepting compliments, disagreeing appropriately, accepting apologies from others, and showing sensitivity to, to others. So those are a basic 10 that are being taught in all classrooms this year. And then we have a focus on next year. So next year, the sixth grade will be in charge of teaching those 10 basic skills plus five more that are targeted from an intermediate skills group. Boys Town breaks it down into basic, intermediate, and advanced skills. And then the seventh grade would just review the 10 basic um, the first week of school, and then they pick new targeted skills for the seventh grade. And then the eighth grade does the same thing. Um, but teachers can add skills to target specific behaviors at any time. Boys Town comes with, I mean, there's just a ton of information there that we could be using. So if something arises and it's not on our poster on our wall, I'm certain that Boys Town probably has it. Um, we do use this in the SIT process as well. And let's see here. I'm going to go back. Sorry. Went too far there. Nope, I'm not done. I just went too far. I didn't know if there was another slide for this or not. Um, but something that is nice is that administrators can reteach this as well. So if they have a student coming down with an office referral, they can see, oh, this is for not following directions. So they can go over that to those basic steps. And then if we see that we have a group of students, maybe there's six of them, who they're just not understanding this one skill. During ice time, one teacher can pull a small group in, and we can go over the lessons 
one-on-one -on -one again. And Lindsay Hodep has been developing all of our lessons, so they are interactive. The kids actually kind of like them, so because we do some, some kind of role playing, and they typically always <laughs> like that. But that is Boys Town in a nutshell. Now, okay, fantastic. <laughs> All right, so you'll recall last year when we formed our uh, SEL committee, our social emotional learning committee, right? We tasked them with trying to find a framework that we could institute at Action Middle School. Boys Town is that framework, right? And so we work um, around that and through that. And so like she mentioned, the consistency piece, we're all speaking the same language, the same verbiage, right? It's look, say, do, right? Look at the person, say, okay, do what you've been asked to do right away, right? That's following directions. I have that one memorized because I say it, right? And, and it, But it's, it's funny, but at the same time, it's one that sometimes we just need to practice a lot, right? So uh, that is that framework that, that we're all talking and speaking the same language. So when the, when the teachers are speaking to the student, right, student to student uh, on our eighth grade floor, our eighth grade kids are easy to point and say, you're not doing the Boys Town skill, right? Which is great. Ultimately, that's what we want because that builds a, a positive culture that um, that these talked about. So, um, so yeah, so kind of a, it's, it's, we're really in the beginning stages. Lindsay Hodep has really taken, uh, taken a hold of this and, and does do our lessons and, and creates them. And then we're all teaching the same thing. So it's consistent across, um, across all grade levels throughout the entire school, which is, uh, what we were, were wanting whenever we did, uh, that SEL committee. So, um, just give you a little behavioral data, just kind of a, a point, uh, a point of where we're at currently in the year. Uh, so uh, last year, at this point in the year, we had 408 uh, referrals. This year, we're at 358. So um, down about 50 referrals, uh, which is a good thing. It's a little bit of progress. Obviously, we want to make more. We're going to continue to make more, and we have a plan for what that looks like as we finish out this year really strong, and then setting up for next year. Uh, with a full rollout, and, and we're going to have students who then have been taught the skills, we know the skills, and then we introduce our sixth graders to this, practice, 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 and uh, and like I said, hopefully we'll continue to see um, a decline in those behavioral referrals, uh, so, but we're on, we're on the right track, we're making some gains, which is good, uh, so, uh, but yeah. Okay, fantastic. So, along with our Boys Town, we also uh, have... Uh, kind of mirrored what the high school has done. Uh, so the, the high school sort of portrait of an a AHS graduate, we wanted to do that at the middle school level and really tie in some of the things that, uh, uh, that the high school uh, was doing so that we can then build to that as they, as they go to the high school because we all have a part in them graduating our high school, right? The middle school has, the elementary school has their part, the middle school has their part, uh, and then the high school obviously has, has their part. So um, what we focused on is, is we focused on disposition. So along with our Boys Town, we've also been talking about sort of those tag words, those bolded words that you see in our graphic self-motivated, disciplined, adaptable, cooperative, curious, right? And along with our Boys Town, we're spending time talking about how we can do these things and that becomes who we are, right? That becomes the portrait of what we want to see in all of our students, right? So as we start to talk about these these big ideals and we tie in the Boys Town skills, we start to look at a student who is global, right? Is someone where we're working on the whole child, right? So that's um, that's been something that we've we've really wanted to focus on. So you can see we have it kind of broken up into independent learner, resilient learner, and, and we've really sort of jumped around a little bit, but uh, these are the focus of um, of our assemblies. Uh, we spent some time talking about it. Uh, we also have lessons that go along with these. Mr. Curley, uh, Jason Curley, who's our seventh grade uh, special education teacher, he is he has taken on that task. And so we, we've really had some teachers step up in a big way um, to, to really help our, our school community. So, All right. Uh, as we've done in the past, we've also been doing our club days. We've continued that. Uh, our main goal with those club days is to get uh, 
our kids to have at least one adult that they connect, can connect with and go to if they need some advice, have something that they need help with. Uh, and also not only along with that adults, but to find other kids that are, you know, have similar interests and backgrounds and hopefully make connections and build relationships um, throughout their year. And, and it may be someone that's in eighth grade. It may be someone that's in sixth grade, but we want to try to build relationships across the building. So if we have, uh, if, you know, an eighth grade teacher sees a, a sixth grader in the hallway when they're going to their elective, they might spark up a little conversation and they, and, you know, when they get up to eighth grade, uh, they'll be able to have that, some of the, some of that relationship already built. Um, and so it's just kind of a building an overall positive, aura within our within our uh, school um, the first quarter we had 26 clubs offered second quarter we had uh, 20 uh, we tried to do these uh, at least three times in a quarter um, we're actually going to do our last one for this round uh, coming up this Wednesday so uh, but we have everything under the sun uh, we have cooking and baking uh, Pokemon we have uh, funky junk uh, bingo I've done archery before uh, right now I'm doing ping pong um, but we're just trying to create those relationships. What we do is we run an early release schedule. Uh, they go to their ice, and then we spend about an hour uh, or so just um, having fun and building those relationships with, with folks. So the kids seem to really enjoy it, and so do the teachers. And it's just a time for us to focus on focus on having some fun and building some relationships uh, across the board. So we're, that's something that we've continued to do. Um, I think this is our second, second or third? Second, second year? Third year? Third year. Third year of doing yeah. that. So uh, it's really been been a good thing. So there's some pictures right there for you. Uh, we are now going to talk a little bit about civic engagement. We've brought a few folks with us. Uh, we're going to start off with our AMS Stuco. So they're going to come on up and tell us a little bit about what they're doing. Hello. I'm going to have this the kids. Mrs. Weedle. Yeah. She's, Hi, she's I'm Miss Weedle. Our sponsor. Yes. Um, I'm going to have the kids pre rep or present this. So they'll go around and they'll go in order from one to seven. So the numbers on the pictures co co uh, coincide with the speaker mm -hmm. as they go along. Okay. So at the beginning of the year, student council showed their spirit with having like removable tattoos in the mornings. And they were completely free, and yeah, it was just a fun way during homecoming week. Um, Stuco planned a combination dress-up week with Red Ribbon, Red Ribbon Week and Anti-Bullying Week, and we made a poster for the student body to sign for Anti-Bullying Week, and we arranged a picture for Red Ribbon Week. Tongue. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Introduce yourself. Yeah. Okay, I'm Daryl Julo. Um, over about Halloween, we raised money for UNICEF with a candy bar drive. Uh, we earned over $250. UNICEF is a nonprofit that targets de um, developing countries. Our, our first speaker was Izzy Coatman, and then we had Emma Finn again. That was our second speaker. I'm Cameron. Um, Stuka went to a regional conference at Silver Lake in the fall. We saw the amazing T Street at this conference. She talked about mental health. Uh, I'm Emery, and the student council put on the Thanksgiving assembly for the school. We played a variety of games, including a student favorite, the pie contest. <laughs> Stuco did a Thanksgiving food drive, and we donated 230 pounds of food to Catholic char charities in northwest Kansas. Oh, I'm Calvin, by the way. <laughs> Um, finally, student council also did a candy drive the week before Christmas, which we raised over $150. We put that money towards a new poster. Uh, it used to be Braves Way, now it's Phoenix Way. We want to give a big thanks to Rox's Images for making this banner for us. Uh, student council is also sponsoring a Valentine's Day Spirit Week this week. Uh, today was Love Yourself Day, so we wore comfy clothes. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, 
Uh, great group of kids. They have a lot of ideas, a lot of fun things for us to do uh, within our school to help build that uh, camaraderie that, um, and also do some things for our community. So uh, next we have another group that does a lot of these things, uh, service-minded uh, things, and so we're going to bring them up. That's our K's group, and um, Mrs. Affield and Mrs. Barty are our sponsors, so I'll let them uh, come on up. They have a little... You guys want to introduce yourselves? Yes, can we do that? While I get this and then up. I'll get, yeah, like fish play. I'm Stephanie Affield, and this is uh, my seventh year sponsoring K's at the middle school. So it's our seventh year to have it. And um, we uh, had set up something in Keynote. It didn't quite work, so we ended up making it a video and put it on YouTube. So we're going to play through it, and it will tell you uh, kind of some of the things we've done this year, not everything. Um, and then some things that we have that are coming up, and then each of the students at the end will kind of share a little bit with you. We brought some of our board members today. This is Ms. Barty. She's also a co-sponsor. <laughs> so, so there's not any sound or anything to it because it was just slides, but yeah, we'll just let you look through it. No, oh, maybe there is. No. <laughs> that's their gold award that they've won four of those now. And that's our K director at Keisha. This is an assembly that we had. And then our conference that we've gone to, we go to another one on Wednesday speaking at our conference, some of our board members. This was our area project that uh, we did. All schools in Kansas have an area that they belong to and are tasked with a certain project to do. And this was our Be the Spark grant from last spring. You can see they're busy in the summer as well. So do a lot of things outside of school in addition to in school time. And that's our camp down at Rock Springs Ranch. So we have upcoming our Mac Madness where we collect uh, boxes of macaroni and cheese kind of like March Madness and have a competition with it. So and then that end one there was uh, the students with their award uh, and our Keisha assistant director Annie Dietrich came and presented uh, that to them during an assembly at the middle school. So I'll let them each introduce themselves and then uh, share something about K's with you. I'm Emma Finnegan and um, one thing I really enjoy about K's is that like I get to meet, especially at camp, I get to meet like new people around Kansas and it's really fun because you kind of can relate to them with like different service projects you do. I'm Izzy Copeman and I like K's because it's a bigger opportunity to help others. It gives us more opportunity to show people what we do, and it's very fun. I'm Celine Healy, and I don't really have a voice, but <laughs> I'm the president of K's, and one thing I love about it is going to camp and eating the really good food, <laughs> and I also like getting new ideas to help the community. I'm Grady Clark. Uh, one thing about I like about K's is I get to help people and go to camp. Excellent. Um, <clears throat> K's very much like Stuco is a, a service um, oriented club that they have. Um, they want to service uh, not only our community but communities outside of us. Uh, and then do that through leadership. So, so K's is very important to us uh, at Ashton Middle School. We, we continue to try to get more and more uh, of our kids in that, um, you know, service, I, you know, 
idea, and so it just helps us. Um, because when we're, when we're helping others, that not only makes us feel good, but it makes the world around us a better place. Uh, and speaking of that, we're going to be um, looking at um, trying to get more people involved uh, in our service projects. We're going to try to maybe do some things like the high school where we have a service day. Uh, we're going to do that, um, the first one, uh, this last quarter, and we're going to do the, the citywide cleanup. We're going to start there. And then between then and now, or next year, we're going to look at trying to have each grade level come up with at least one service project they can do um, maybe once a semester to try to get them to go out. And it can be something that's very small. It can be something that's a little bit bigger. So we're going to just kind of look into those ideas. Uh, again, just trying to get the our that service, you know, helping others, um, knowing that we're all, we're all in this together type of idea. So uh, that's coming soon. So maybe we can report a little bit on that next time. Um, so I thought we'd jump into some data here. I'm going to run through this, uh, pretty quickly. We got, uh, we use iReady. We use, we do this three times a year. Um, you can see by the graphs here, uh, we just completed our, our winter, uh, session, uh, the, on the top graph there, um, you can see the, the kind of faded out line there. That's where we were at, uh, it, we're coming in in the fall. Uh, and our goal is to reduce the red, increase the green, um, you know, the yellow can kind of go, you know, cause you're moving kids into the yellow so that, you know, if they were in red, so really pay attention to the, uh, the red and the, and the, and the green, as you can see, um, we are, we are moving kids, you know, we're getting a lot more kids into the yellow and the, and the greens, uh, down below that growth, those growth charts, um, you'll see that 83% where it says progress towards typical annual typical growth. So what that means is our middle kids is scoring in the middle, you know, dead, dead smack in the middle. They are, are already at 83% of their annual typical growth. So, um, you know, we have a lot of kids above, above that. So we are, we are very proud at the movement, uh, that we're getting. Our teachers are, are really focused on learning. Uh, they're doing their visible learning. Uh, we're doing, uh, our learning intentions and our success criteria. When you walk into our building, there's just a different, there's a lot of different conversations that we haven't had in the past. You know, we're really focused on learning. And I think you're seeing that with our data. We are really getting kids to jump, uh, in, in math. Uh, we are also doing that in, in reading there. You can see that um, from the fall to um, our most recent winter one, uh, we have a lot more kids in the green. We're reducing that red. Uh, if you go down to the bottom, our progress toward our annual typical growth. So that same median kid that we were talking about, and maybe a different kid, but um, that middle kid is at 133% of their annual typical growth. So they are, they've already met a year's worth of growth and more. So we've got a lot of kids way above that. We've got a few uh, below that, but you know, your middle kid, if they're already reaching an annual tip of growth of over a year, our, our, our teachers are, and kids are doing really well. Um, and so this kind of, this next growth chart kind of breaks it down for us a, a little bit more. Um, you can see where um, the if you look at the typical growth side, um, the left side, um, we have 40%, 47% in uh, math of our kids that have met that. So it just breaks it down a little bit more of that annual typical growth. Uh, so they've ha had um, an average of 100%, 100 points more growth on, the, on their, um, their iReady scores. Um, so we still have some kids. So we've got a, a lot of kids with a lot of growth. And then we've got on the other end of the spectrum, we've got a few kids that haven't grown a whole lot. Um, and so that's what we're going to work on from now until the end of the year. And same thing with, with, um, English ELA, we have uh, 58% that have met their growth already and are, are moving past that one year of growth. Um, so, um, again, showing a ton of growth within our kids, both in reading and math. Um, it's taken all of our teachers, whether they're, they're teaching science and social studies or whether they're teaching reading and math, there's a focus. And like I said, the conversations, uh, that they're having about that with their kids, you know, their kids are even talking about that as well. Um, they're, they're excited to get, to get better too. And so just, uh, just a different feel that, you know, now that we're focused a lot more, you know, intentionally on, on learning. Um, and some of the things that our teachers did at our last PLC time, uh, was they took their iReady scores. So if they, if they, uh, gave an iReady, 
Um, they took all of their sections and then they plotted it on, on this graph. Um, and if they were in the green, you know, did they have, did they have high growth to get there? Did they have, was it, they were already there? Um, were they in the red and did they moved up? So they, they put it on this graph and then I gave them some data analysis questions that they had to go to so that they could make a plan on, okay, so we had some kids that may not have grown like we wanted them to, but what are we going to do next? Um, we don't focus on that. They're, you know, we may be here, we may be there. We got to figure out a plan of what, what our next step is. And so that's what our teachers are really working on, uh, being intentional, hitting those, those learning goals, those uh, success criteria and learning intentions. And again, just really being focused on here's, Here's where we're at. You know, at this point, we can't do anything about that right now, but we can do something about how we move forward. Uh, and so that's what our, our teachers are really working on. So they're doing a lot of planning and uh, making those goals based off the, the academic um, uh, data that we have going on. So um, I just want to put a shout out to all of our teachers who put in that work uh, day in and day out. They do a, a wonderful job each and every day to show up for our kids and put their best interests at heart, whether that be academically or, or socially. So uh, they do a wonderful job within our building. Can't say enough about them. So at this, at this point, was there any questions? I went over that kind of quickly. Any questions over the data and things? Perfect. Well, I'm going to turn it over to Mr. Lukanoff. He's got some exciting news for us. Okay, so uh, Activities Committee knows this has been my little project here for the last two and a half years. So, uh, But for everybody else, so um, in June of 2020, we started to investigate um, getting ourselves into a middle school league. Uh, we saw diminishing opportunities for our students, less games, less opportunities. Uh, and COVID really kind of exacerbated that because everybody kind of went back to their leagues. And we're like, everybody else that's kind of an independent or on the outside – we're sorry, you know, we're just going to stick to these games. And, and, and so we really saw a loss in, in games and opportunities. And so we knew we had to do something about it. Uh, we did petition to, to try and join three leagues. Uh, we tried to join the big seven league. We tried to join the call Valley league, and then we tried to join the frontier league. So we inquired to them about membership, um, uh, and we're done subsequently denied with some of the reasonings for that being distance related. Uh, but in the grand scheme of things, the distance that we were from these schools was not what I would call inconvenient. And so, uh, and so we continued to try and we continued to go to places and, and really try and um, sell our middle school as to why we think we would be wonderful members. And, and ultimately we needed some help. Uh, we, we ended up going to, to Keisha um, and uh, petitioning their executive board to assign us in a league. We tried to do it ourselves. We've been denied three times. We don't feel like the reasonings for why we're being denied are um, adequate. And so therefore, hey, we want to we want to be in a league. And so uh, Dr. Nugent, Chad and myself went in front of the Keisha executive board in November uh, of this year. Um, we presented Atchison Middle School. Um, we really made the claim that we wanted to either be in the Call Valley League, uh, which would be uh, it would be Richard Warren, um, a lot of the Gardner schools, um, really kind of that KCK, um, Piper, you know, kind of Western uh, Wyandotte County, um, but also a lot bigger schools than us. We would be the smallest school in there. Or uh, we, we uh, petitioned to either have us placed in the Big Seven, right, which would be to the north and to the west of us. Um, we would be one of the bigger schools. We probably would be the biggest school in the Big Seven uh, as far as a middle school goes. But uh, competition-wise, I think we really fit – uh, really fit in there. And so we went and presented uh, in front of them. Uh, they made a, a recommendation that they wanted to conduct a league assignment hearing, uh, which essentially means that they're going to bring the Big Seven and the Call Valley League and us all into the same room. And we're going to then share our piece again in front of them. And then they're going to then share their reasons why it's not a good idea or why we shouldn't be added. Uh, <laughs> so that happened in January. We presented again. The two leagues were there. Um, ultimately, the, the executive board, uh, a motion was made to place us in the Big Seven. 
Um, that was seconded and then unanimously voted that we would do that. So we have been placed into the uh, the Big Seven League. Uh, that will start in the 24-25 school year. So what that means is we'll have roughly another year, obviously, and, you know, finish out this year and then another year as an independent. However, it was the, the directive from the executive board that they start to schedule us, right? We're going to have uh, some consistency in schedules, but at least to familiarize everyone. And, and we do play several of these teams are already, most notably Holton and Hiawatha. Uh, we play, you know, we, Sabetha, you know, track, go to Sabetha, play a lot of volleyball against volleyball, basketball against Holton, Hiawatha, Sabetha. So um, it'll it'll be a it'll be a really cool thing. So we're glad that it's happening. And I'm really proud that I did this. OK, so I'm just going to do this. So in 24, 25, it. In 24-25, Riverside, which is in Wathena, uh, they are going to be exiting from there. So I'm really proud about what I did to this slide. Okay, they go away. Boom. Boom. Come on now. Right. I, the only thing that bothers me is it's not the same color gray. Right. But I'll get over it. So but uh, I think it's uh, I think it's a testament to our uh, to our school um, and to um, from the very get go, I've had Dr. Nugent's support, and I'm so appreciative for that. And and uh, our activities committee, um, the support of our board members to go and do this and keep pursuing it. And, and it's gonna it's gonna pay off. I didn't know when, but two and a half years later, here we are. So we're we're excited to get get to that. That's gonna have great consistency for our parents, for our students. It's gonna equalize opportunities across the rest of the schools in the state of Kansas, right? Uh, and it's going to really give us a little bit of a home, right? We've kind of been floating out in independent land for a while, and, and I think this is a great way to continue uh, continue our growth as a school uh, and then uh, obviously prepare our, our students to go and compete for state championships when we get to the high school level because, um, you know, we, we need that, right? We need that. We need those tough games, and, and we need to uh, – uh, to do that, and this is an extremely competitive league, and we'll get all that they can handle. I'm sure the first couple of years, so we're we're excited to be a part of it. So, but exciting. Want to share the good news right here at the end, right? So, uh, so that that'll be exciting, and and we'll um, we'll have some more information as as it comes available. We'll make sure to share that with you guys. So, about that, we that's all we have for you guys. If there's unless there's any questions or anything, like that. Yeah. Okay. awesome. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, everyone, uh, that presented as well. There's no one uh, to appear before the board tonight, so we will go on with the next, which is the approval of tonight's consent agenda as presented. May I have a motion, please? I move to approve the consent agenda as presented. Thank you, Sean. May I have a second? I'll second. Thank you, Stephanie. Any discussion on any of those? Seeing none, all in favor, raise your right hand. Thank you so much. Passes unanimously. Next up is Mrs. Honeywell with the action items tonight to revise and refer, reaffirm our policies, which is the second read. Thank you, Correct. Ms. Honeywell. Yep, this is the list of policies that you looked over at the last mm -hmm. month, and there were no recommended changes at this mm -hmm. time for those. I'd entertain a motion to accept those as presented. So moved. Thank you, Sean. Thank you, Sally. Um, any discussion? Seeing none, all in favor, raise your right hand. Thank you so much. Passes unanimously. Next is to approve the resolution for 23-02, authorizing and approving the execution and delivery of the Apple Master Lease Agreement which is the iPads uh, and all that. Does anybody, would you make a motion for that, please? I okay. move to approve the master lease agreement. You want to speak? Sorry. Yeah. I know. May I have a second? Okay. Oh, Debbie, thank you so much. So uh, any discussion? Seeing none, all in favor, raise your right hand. That passes unanimously as well. Uh, next is items for discussion and consideration. And again, Ms. Honeywell, if you can come back and visit with us a little about the policy review. 
Sure. So this time, this round, we do have one recommended change from KASB, mm -hmm. but I'll let you kind of take a look. Those are the, the policies that are up here. So the recommended change is to policy IDAB, and this policy references support programs. So the first highlighted area and anything that's highlighted we're recommending is added to the policy. Anything that's struck out and in gray would be removed. And the first section is pretty simple, just CIC and LDD. Those are other policies that are also pertinent. And then you'll see that they're really language changes where it refers to dropout prevention. It's just adding that the superintendent may develop and implement. And what we're taking out are some more specific information. So this allows more um, creativity on the superintendent's part to address dropout. And then under homebound instruction, this really condenses the language to just say this would be an IEP team or 504 team decision. And then everything in gray says the same thing, but just in a wordier way. So those, those are the two changes to that particular policy, again, recommended from KASB. Yep. So everybody take a look at those, and um, we'll come back with that next board meeting. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, next, we are going to discuss our 2425 school calendar, and Dr. Mm -hmm. Nugent is going to visit with us about that. All right, and we have a couple board members who serve on that calendar committee, so if I miss anything, they're welcome to jump in. But as you know, our calendar is, uh, committee meets to set the calendar for two years down the road. So next year's was set and approved last year about this time. So this would be for the 24-25 calendar year. It came down to two choices in the calendar, and the choice in which the teacher workday was the Monday before school starting was the, the only change really to the calendar that was um, voted on by certified staff. Um, so that is about the only change to that. Um, there has been discussion, it's not a part of the calendar committee, but um, that there will be no open houses until after that work day, so even the night of that work day, so that way um, our staff will have their rooms ready before parents come in, but that's a discussion to be had with principals down the road, uh, but that was uh, part of the discussion for the calendar committee. So I, I totally support the recommendation from the certified staff, and um, I think this is our first read of that calendar uh, committee uh, recommendation, so we would uh, anticipate a, a vote on that at the next meeting. Yes? Um, so do they know, do we no longer put like the dates for graduation on the calendar? We don't, that's not a part of this calendar committee's job. When we have the date, mm -hmm. it will be announced and put on that calendar, but it's not a part of the committee's okay. job okay. to determine that date. Okay. Great question. Mm -hmm. So we'll just take a good look at that and ponder it, and again, we'll bring it back next month. Next uh, under items for discussion is the future bond project. As you know, we had a special board meeting, uh, I think it was last week, maybe the week before, to discuss uh, a possible future bond project. So I just, do you want to overview? Sure. Um, we just wanted to visit with you about the potential of uh, a future bond project. As you know, our last bond project was done in around 2014 at Atchison Middle School, 1415. Um, and it is time to really revisit some things that uh, might need work, as well as some things that could benefit the community. Um, this is not something we would even consider if it would require any kind of an increase um, to our mill levy rate. Um, and based on our numbers right now, that would be the case. Um, I'm not asking for a vote to have a to have a bond and, and put it on a um, a special election at this point. But what I'm am just seeking is some discussion and feedback as to whether or not 
um, I can start pursuing some of the smaller group discussions um, just to gauge from our community um, their response for the potential for a future bond issue. Mm -hmm. And then as we move forward, we would come back together with maybe some specific votes on uh, amounts, dates, um, and such if if the need is there and the want is there. I, as I shared during that special board meeting, one of the things I'm most proud of in this community is the historical pride that we have in our buildings and our buildings. You know, our newest building right now is 25, almost 25 years old. And our buildings are kept up. Um, that is a huge shout out to our facilities and custodial staff. Um, when you walk into a building, it's immaculate at all times. It's mm -hmm. it's a blessing. And so kudos to us for just the natural wear and tear that we cannot let get out of control. So we know that in, on old buildings, we have to revisit roofs and HVAC quite regularly. And those are two items that I would definitely want us to address. But it's also nice that there's not going to be talk of um, you know, crazy things because we just have really done a good job. Our facilities, long range planning has been done very well prior to me getting here. And I've, I've seen that in action. So I just wanted some discussion from the board and maybe, um, the go ahead just to start, start looking at our future. Mm -hmm. Well, I certainly learned a lot at our work session and I like the fact no mill levy increase. I know we have great needs, uh, in our roofs uh, on several of our buildings. I personally um, would like to see um, us go forward to visit with community members, to visit with um, patrons so we can get a good feel. That's my personal opinion because the roofs, we're getting to where it's not funny anymore. So what, what are some of your thoughts? I agree. I think we need to identify our needs and visit buildings and hear from uh, those in the buildings who deal with the day-to-day -day, uh, maintenance needs, uh, repair needs, visit with Jay, uh, let our community see what those needs are. Let them see the pride we have in our buildings, but also let them see the, the, the needs. What I, what I don't want to see us do is try and Band-Aid repairs when, we need, when they need to be done properly, such as the HVAC systems. Um, since our um, special meeting, I've gotten a little bit of feedback as far as um, support for us looking to do uh, what's best for our community and to invest um, in our kids um, and, and the community as a whole, just because the need is, is there. Um, when you look at other districts similar to our size and, and what they have available and, and, um, and their facilities and all, um, I think it's time. Well, I uh, wasn't it was it this fall or last year sometime that the air conditioning was out for a good period of time and for buildings if you don't have that air conditioner on there's no air conditioning period and that affects a student's ability to learn if they're uncomfortable they're not going to you know learn as well so um, the needs are there. Um, we've, well, be prior to the, the grade school, when was the middle school? Do you remember when that was renovated? Okay. So we're talking a good number of, of years and things need to be replaced. I, um, I agree. I remember one of our very first board meetings when I came on, Jay started walking us through buildings and really pointing out all of the needs. And it was very eye-opening to hear how many things really needed to be taken care of. And I was one of those people when the air conditioner broke at the beginning of the year, we went to back to school night at the middle school and bless Miss Barty's heart. I was in her room and we were all sweating profusely. So I can attest, yeah, there we definitely have some things that need to be fixed. So, and I love the fact that when we did meet for our special board meeting, they talked about how important it is to get that community input because mm -hmm. I want to hear from not only people who currently have 
kids in the district, but people who will be having kids come through our district. What does that look like for you and your family? What kind of facilities do you want to see for your kids? And so I think it's a, an exciting opportunity to grab the community and really make something great for our kids because that's what we always want is what's best for our students. So I'm excited about it. <laughs> what Stephanie said. <laughs> 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 yeah, ditto. No, um, so I know before you had, when we discussed it last week, you had also discussed like maybe improving the preschool program as well. Like, would that mean like combining, to, so making to where that the preschool itself would be now attached to the school or what do you think that would, what that would look like? So we, we definitely have some needs there, mm -hmm. but I think the beginning stages of this would just be to gauge from the community what that might look like, mm -hmm. um, a lot of options. And then that's where when we get those options and, and input, mm -hmm. we come back to the board and say, this is what the community really emphasized they wanted. So if, if early childhood is a part of that discussion, then we would then we would look at the options mm -hmm. there. Mm -hmm. um, I've always said that the one thing when you look at early childhood, um, two things. We don't have enough peer mentors in our early childhood to counterbalance the special education needs. And we know that peer models um, have a significant increase in, in learning for all children. Um, we also know that we have really good early childhood programs here, but we're missing probably 40%, 50% of the population who could take advantage of that. So seeking out those who, who still have a need, but maybe don't qualify for at-risk preschool, early childhood, mm -hmm. they don't go to ACCA, they don't go to First Steps, they don't go to your um, um, Head Start. And so there is a population we're missing. But again, that's mm -hmm. something we... We need to get input from the community. A lot of our students with special needs are preschool students, and because of their location on campus, um, we have people going in and out of that facility all the time. Mm -hmm. And so it would be nice to have a more centrally located space, um, certainly. But that's, again, something I, I would be right. interested in, and we just really need to gauge community support on that very good question. Okay. My turn, I guess. Um, another area that I would like to see us look at the possibility of improving our fine arts department and giving them more room. Uh, the band and the choir are sharing a space, they're very quiet, very crowded, and that's a very well populated uh, activity for our students. Um, and I really appreciate. Uh, that we are trying, that we will work within, we will be good stewards of our community's money and not increasing the, the mill levy um, and getting the community input on what they see for us. Yeah, I don't know if any of you were able to make the middle school musical last week, but as I as I watched the talent there, I thought the future for fine yes. arts in this community just keeps getting brighter and brighter and brighter. Mm -hmm. And again, I don't disagree. I think that's an area that we definitely need to look at. Mm -hmm. um, but our whole the whole purpose I'm hoping in these first steps is really to gauge that community input. Does the community see that need for the fine arts? Mm -hmm. um, I think. You know, the good thing about our community is we have some highly engaged parents, and I really believe that they're going to come out. Um, Stephanie, I really appreciate your point of not just looking at those who have students in school, but we also need to look at um, people who have, have no longer have any children in the school system. How can we add value to their lives as well as those coming into the district um, what what would make us an appealing place for their kids. So all of that, I'm hoping to engage all of those stakeholders over the next several months. Um, it sounds like that's the direction you would like me to go, so yes, I, I will that. start working on that. Yes, thank you so much. Uh, we look forward to this, really. I'm, I think I speak for all of us that we are really looking forward to what the future holds. Good things are happening at Atchison. Okay, next is our executive session. Um, before everybody leaves, you want to go and talk about that?
about the chiefs while they're here. Oh, no. Okay. Okay. So uh, may I have a motion about the executive session, please? Yes. Madam President, I move that the board recess into an executive session to discuss the following subjects. Negotiations. The justification for this executive session is to discuss employer-employee negotiations, whether or not in consultation with the representative or representatives of the body or an agency pursuant to the exception for employer and employee negotiations under KOMA. The open... Re Meeting will resume in the BOE community room at 8 o'clock. 8 o'clock p.m. Uh, 7 o'clock. Oh, I'm 7 sorry, 7 o'clock. 7 o'clock. And we'll invite Mr. Mears and Ethan yeah. Hausman. We're going to invite Ethan yeah. Hausman and Mr. Mears will be joining us. Yes. yes. Matt and she had the motion. Matt. All second. Thank you, Stephanie. Uh, any discussion? Seeing none, all in favor, raise your right hand for yeah, 12 minutes. All right. Thank you so much. Thank you uh, for your patience with that. We are uh, back in session, and we have a personnel list. Uh, Diane? Yes, uh, I have the following. Um, I move that we accept the following resignations. Tina Yank, English teacher, Atchison High School, effective at the end of the current school year for the purposes of retirement. Karen Glennon, SFA facilitator, Atchison Elementary School, effective at the end of the current school year for the purposes of retirement. Leslie Zimmer, kindergarten teacher, Atchison Elementary School, effective December 19, 2022, with liquidated damages and the agreement not to seek a teaching position for the remainder of the 2022-2023 school year. Tina Barajas, ISS facilitator and paraeducator. Tracy Klein, paraeducator, Atchison High School, effective March 1st, 2023. May I have a second on that, please? Thank you, Brandy. Any discussion? Seeing none, all in favor, raise your right hand. Thank you so much. Passes unanimously. Employment recommendations? I move that we accept the following employment rec rec recommendations for the 2022-2023 school year. Jennifer Nell. Food service worker, Atchison Elementary School, effective January 23rd, 2023. And Allison O'Neill, custodian, Atchison Middle School, effective February 21st, 2023. Second, please. Second. Thank you, Sally. Any discussion? Seeing none, all in favor, raise your right hand. Thank you so much. Passes unanimously. I move that we accept the following transfers for the current school year. Rhonda Goodpasture, 10-month secretary, Atchison High School, to 12-month secretary, Atchison Middle School, effective January 26, 2023. Ashley Calloway, food service worker, Atchison Middle School, to food service site manager, Atchison Middle School, effective June 1, 2023. Julie Lowe, ingenuity facilitator, Atchison High School, to 10-month secretary, Atchison High School, effective February 13th, 2023. And Brad Smith, fifth grade teacher, Atchison Elementary School, to paraeducator, Atchison Middle School, effective February 21st, 2023. Thank you, Sally, for the second. Any discussion? 
All in favor, raise your right hand. Thank you so much, passes unanimously. I move that we accept, accept the extensions of administrators and directors contracts for the 2023-2024 school year. Chad Bilderback, Principal, Atchison Middle School. Jacqueline Coleman, Director, Curriculum and Instruction. Andrea Coppinger, Associate Principal, Atchison Elementary School. Letitia Downing, Principal, Central School. Mark Felvis, Assistant Principal, Activities Director, Atchison High School. Lindsay Hansen, Assistant Principal, Atchison High School. Nicole Honeywell, Director, Special Education. Lori Lanter, Business Manager, the Board Office. Andrew Lilly, Associate Principal, Atchison Elementary School. Tyler Lukanoff, Assistant Principal, Activities Director, Atchison Middle School. Charlotte Ortel, Assistant Director, Food Service. Donna Knoll, Director, Technology Education. Lisa Pierce, Head Principal, Atchison Elementary School. Jay Robinson, Director, Maintenance. Lacey, Warren's head, Lacey Warren, Head Principal, Atchison High School. Thank you, Sean, for the second. Um, any discussion? It's a great slate of people. All in favor, raise your right hand. Thank you so much. Passes unanimously. Before we head out, please remember March's regular scheduled meeting is the 6th because of spring break. And Renee has an announcement. So we've gotten a lot of uh, talk about those Chiefs, which was quite awesome that they won the Super Bowl and their parade is scheduled for Wednesday. Um, there's been talk about whether or not to have um, an emergency leave day for the parade. However, uh, we're not going to cancel school for the parade. If any parent wishes to take their child to the parade, we encourage that. That's an awesome thing to do. Just call your student in, get the assignments that he or she missed. But what a great experience. And for those that stay here, we're hoping to celebrate appropriately in the classrooms as well. So um, it's a fun time, but not everyone can go. And so uh, we'll have school for those that choose to stick around. And you all know me. I'm a pretty avid Chiefs fan. I won't. I'll lead by example. I won't be attending that parade. I'll be at work uh, leading you all as well. So have a great evening. And with that, I'd entertain a motion to adjourn. I so move. And may I have a second? Any discussion? All in favor? Raise your right hand. Passes unanimously.